Right then, hello and welcome back to Porsche Challenge. We are on the home straight now, only one championship left to do, and that is, of course, the evil difficulty. But to make our lives a little bit easier, we are going to unlock the test driver early and tune the test driver as well. And to do that, we have to put in a couple of cheat codes, and you have to do it on the main menu. So to get the test driver, it is right and square at the same time, then left circle select at the same time. So let me just put this in quickly. Right square, left circle select. And if you do it correctly, you get a weird laugh and you can check the cheat that you've enabled as well. And we're going to tune the test driver as well, which is left and circle at the same time, then right square select at the same time. So it's left and circle, right square select, and we can tune the test driver. Uh, so we're going to go for maximum grip and maximum speed. That will give us a top speed of around about 262 kilometers an hour rather than the 238 you get with the default machines. And, um, yeah, we can now select the test driver in all of his glory, which is wonderful. And, of course, evil mode. You know it's evil because it's got an exclamation mark at the end. So, let's get started then. Race number one in Stuttgart. And the same uh, races as before. Start off with Stuttgart, then you go to the USA, then it's Japan, and, uh, of course, Alpine. Whoa, Madonna! Whoa, Madonna, indeed. And away we go. And of course, uh, my driver doesn't say a damn thing at all. He was like the Stig before the Stig was a thing. There we go, topping out 262. But the reason I'm using the test driver is that it makes our lives a lot easier with the timer because the checkpoint timer you can see is already down to like six seconds. And uh, using the default cars was a massive pain. So you'd always run out of time, but no, this just makes makes things a little bit easier so I can get through this series a lot quicker than I usually would using the default cars. Let me just squeeze past him. And there's lap one complete. See, we still only had seven seconds on the uh, clock. If we were using the regular cars, it'd probably been down to like two. And you do get given less time with each lap as well, so it makes it incredibly difficult to actually complete some of the races. This just gives us a little bit of a safety net, really. Now you can, there is a couple of other cheats you can use as well. One of them is you can jump off these like little bumps in the road and it just launches the car forward. There we go. Coming up to the final lap, and only the one car to pass. It doesn't make it easier as in passing the AI drivers, because they still catch up to you regardless of how fast you're going. But again, it just makes it less of a headache, really. There we go. So you can still see they're catching up on the radar. There they are. Of course, that is Dan this time, who is uh, our main antagonist for this season. And we got a new record as well, 213 flat and 42.8. And of course, next race in the USA. I'm going to get started in the USA for race two. Now, because this is on evil mode as well, we have got more obstacles as well. So if you notice on uh, on this one, we have uh, impenetrable little barriers and things like that on the side of the track. So, uh, yeah, it's just little things like that. And away we go. You've seen the timer there as well. Counted down to zero on the first lap, which is very cruel, but there you go. There you go. Those uh, little things there on the side, I think they're parking meters. You cannot get through them. And here as well, these barriers, you can't move out the way either. So navigating the trams makes it a little bit difficult.
Two to go. Get out of the way, please. Thank you. Any trams here? No, we're good. I, I don't know why, but I really like that seagull sound effect. It always reminds me of my youth when we used to go to Weymouth when I was a kid. That's all you'd ever hear would be seagulls everywhere. You don't get that nowadays. Most of the time, seagulls are in like the city centers and you hear them like during the summer. But back in my youth, you know, the seaside is where all the seagulls used to be. It was pretty much rarely heard of you'd hear seagulls in the middle of a city, but of course, tourism and feeding the birds and everything, they just flock in their droves. I miss going to Weymouth. That was always a highlight of a summer, you know, break up for school and the summer holidays. And always go to Weymouth. And there we go. Race two complete. Yeah, this is going to go very quickly. And another record as well. 44-1 for the lap. And 2.17.8 for the total race time. Next race, Japan. Or Japan. Or the Nippon. One of them. Race record so far, 248.7. Lap record is not available. Whoa, Madonna. Whoa, Madonna. Okay. And off we go. Get out of the way. There you go. Timer was all already counting down to nothing. I'll have to check if that little opening is uh, actually accessible on this one. Where is it? It's just here, isn't it? No, it's not open. Okay, so that was pointless. It's alright, no need to panic because we'll catch up anyway. The AI always love to slow down at the end. And you get mines of dirt as well pile up when you complete each of the uh, other laps. Just little obstacles that develop as the race goes on. So only in third at the moment. But yeah, not a problem. We'll catch up before the end, I hope. There's one. Where's the other? Oh, he's just up there. There you go. See, like, mines of dirt in the way. There we go. See? Easy peasy. Don't have to worry at all. And there we go. Race is complete. Uh, again, very, very quick. Lap record 44.9 and race record 2.22.7. I think Dan actually didn't get second place either. So we might have the green car now as our main antagonist for the final race in the Alpine. Which wouldn't be too bad. It mixes it up a little bit. So race record on this one 2.54. Lap record not available. Oh no, it is still down, okay. 
I like how my driver just looks over and just as if to say, what the hell are you talking about? Oh, you cheeky little swine. So even though we got the maximum grip, the car still does slide on the snowy level. This is where you see the boulders in the middle of the road. Only one there at the moment, but they will increase as the laps go on. Right up into fourth. Squeeze past you, please. Where's the other driver? Yellow car is up ahead. The one that we were driving before. What was her name? Nikita, I think. Oh, and there's the rocks. See, even though we got the test driver, this race is still the hardest one to do because of the fact that you really don't have a lot of time with the race being so short. So catching up with the uh, leader. Oh no, he's just there. Never mind. Ignore what I was saying. As long as we can navigate past the rocks, that'll be fine. Like so. And there we go. So that is the regular tracks done already. That was very, very quick. And then we have the long tracks. And the last one to do the interactive tracks. And then it'll be game complete. Well, not really again, because we could do the... Uh, the mirror mode but I'm not gonna bother because it again it doesn't bring anything new to the table so um but yeah there we go that's the regular tracks done only two episodes to go and uh, we'll get on with long mode next time so I'll leave it here for now thank you very much for watching as always and I'll see you for the penultimate episode of Porsche Challenge next time take care stay safe and I'll see you then bye for now